As they gathered their evidence, the January 6th committee returned again and again to one state, Georgia. When Donald Trump tried to overturn the election results, he focused on just a few states. The former president had a particular obsession with Georgia. I think that Trump chose us because Republicans did control basically every level of government. You got the House, you got the Senate, all Republican controlled, not even close. I think he thought he could come here and basically just by some kind of fiat say, okay, make it happen. And it was in Georgia that Donald Trump received a stark warning from Gabriel Sterling, an election official. Gabriel Sterling explicitly warned President Trump about potential violence on December 1st, 2020, more than a month before January 6th. You will see excerpts from that video repeatedly today. Mr. President, it looks like you likely lost the state of Georgia. Stop inspiring people to commit potential acts of violence. Someone's going to get hurt, someone's going to get shot, someone's going to get killed. And it's not right. Gabe Sterling called out Donald Trump. He was the first to really, as far as I remember, to really come out and say, there's going, like, this is going to lead to violence. We're investigating. There's always a possibility. I get it. You have Gabe Sterling is not listed as some kind of a Republican in name only or some kind of a liberal Republican prior to that moment. I've been a Republican since I was about nine when Reagan was running for re-election. I was nine years old when I first kind of declared myself. My mother was not very happy, but my dad was pleased. I was working campaigns in the late 80s and early 90s. So yeah, I've been around Republican politics as an operative and a volunteer since before I could drive a car. So yeah, I've been at it for a while. The chair recognizes the gentleman from California, Mr. Schiff, for an opening statement. Mr. Sterling, uh, thank you also for being here today. Following the Schiff. I remember they told me he was going to question me. I'm like, damn it. I can't stand that guy. <laughs> he irritates me to death because I think he's wrong and doesn't tell the truth a lot. Let's take a look at what but I said, you know what? I'm just going to play this straight. I'm a fact witness. Just answer the questions. Donald Trump claims that there was, quote, massive voter fraud in Georgia. Uh, Mr. Sterling, that was just plain false, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Nevertheless, I want to give some perspective for this. I was the voting system implementation manager. I was a bureaucrat of all bureaucrats, basically, at that time. No one should know who the hell I am. I just was doing my job. Sterling was on the front line as Trump attacked the Georgia election results. Thousands of uncounted votes discovered in Georgia counties. Big voter fraud information coming out concerning Georgia. Georgia Republicans are angry. All Republicans are angry. Get it done. The people in Georgia are mad. They know their votes were stolen. Georgia, of the six states I looked at, is a cesspool. Georgia's probably going to be the first state I'm going to blow up, and the Secretary of State need to go with it. Everyone must go to the capital of Georgia now. We need to see people power, and this will do it. We want Trump! We want Trump! We want Trump! We want Trump! On the ground, tensions were mounting. I mean, you have a whole voting population out there who still today believes that this election was stolen. And they think that, you know, some fraud happened, and, you, and that's how you end up in situations where they're threatening the election officials in Georgia. Keep opposing the audit, and somebody in your family is going to have a very unfortunate incident. Please pray. We plan for the death of you and your family every day. I'm sorry. You and your family will be killed very slowly. It wasn't fun, I can tell you that. Um, we were in the mix of a radicalized lie, essentially. And it just kept on escalating. Y'all are blow your the threats poured into the voicemails of election officials. Hope you're happy with the way it's going, because you know whose fault this is when the gets the 
goddamn fan because you know it's coming. We're coming after you and every mother with our Second Amendment. Enemy communist sucker, you will be served lead. It has all gone too far. All of it. It has to stop. I had no script. In fact, I didn't realize I was going to call out the president, so I was literally saying the words out loud at the time. Mr. President, you have not condemned these actions or this language. This has to stop. We need you to step up, and if you're going to take a position of leadership, show some. After you made this plea to the president, did Donald Trump urge his supporters to avoid the use of violence? Not to my knowledge. Now, as we know, the president was aware of your speech because he tweeted about it later that day. The president retweeted a criticism of Gabriel Sterling's press conference. So the president was aware that there were threats of violence, and he persisted in the big lie. You have Gabriel Sterling say, people will die. This was the warning, and Donald Trump was unmoved by it. Was there any sort of a sense that maybe we had to dial down the rhetoric, that maybe this is getting out of hand, maybe this is dangerous? No. Gabriel Sterling's warning that someone could get killed, I think that still remains true today. Because you still have the president targeting judges and, and, and law clerks and witnesses, and I think it is remarkable that no one has been physically hurt, but I think time will tell whether that's something does happen.